Welcome to Startup Pack. All right, Microsoft just claimed that they've done what many thought was impossible. They created a particle that was only theoretical until now. So after two decades of research, they've unveiled Majorna 1 chip. So this isn't hyperbole, this is actual math. This is gonna be pretty amazing. Let's dive into some of the details today. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer Thomason here at Startup Pack. We love to train software developers in our licensed coding boot camps as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so let's break it down. So Microsoft has been hunting against this and working on it for over a decade, right? And they've been working on trying to get this chip carved out for a new path for over, uh, over two decades, excuse me. And they've been hunting this theoretical particle for 17 plus years. It's their longest running research project in company history. They first uh, observed the Major Moj Majorana particle last year. Now they claim they can actually control it and use it for computing. They've essentially created a new state called a top topo conductor. This isn't an upgrade to an existing quantum computer. It's an entirely different approach. So as they went through, and you can see that they can hold this right into their hand, right? Um, and there's a, been a lot of different videos and things they've talked about it. They say a laptop, like something with the size of a laptop could solve problems with 10 electrons that and a supercomputer, maybe 20. So this is no classical computer. Uh, so no classical computer can solve a problem with just 50 electrons. These aren't software limitations. They're fundamental physical, uh, physical walls, right? So the current quantum computers are like the vacuum tube era of computing. And we've been stuck in that incremental progress for years. But Microsoft's complaining that they found the transistor moment, right? So the same way that computers leapt forward from va uh, vacuum tubes when it was when the transistor was uh, com was invented. Now they they say that this is going to be that leap, right? Regular qubits are incrementally fragile and prone to errors, right? They require temperature control. Uh, let's see if I can find a good picture here. I think Microsoft has a picture in here. If not, I do in one of these other ones here. So um, there's this new state of matter here, right? And this is. Um, the topical conductor here, right? So um, they require temperature colder than deep space. You face an impossible trade-off of stability versus size. So making qubits stable, they get, hu uh, they, they get huge, right? They, and to make them small, they're unstable. So currently design needed was a warehouse sized facility for just dozens of qubits. This scalability problem had been quantum computing's biggest roadblock. So the Majorna particle exists in a unique state of matter predicted a century ago. It's literally half an electron that it's an own antiparticle. Microsoft has created a material where these particles can exist and be controlled. Topological qubits have uh, error protection built into their physical structure. This means that they're inherently more stable without massive cooling. And they're uh, painting for individual atoms to create this new material. Now. If your company isn't working well together because it seems like there's you know this material imbalance, let us come in and help you because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting systems so that your company can work like a well-oiled machine. So reach out to us at startuppack.com slash Spencer and we can help. Now, the major, major, Majorana, I can't say that word for some reason, uh, Majorana One chip can theoretically fit a million qubits into just the palm of your hand. Every atom is placed with purpose to enable quantum operations. They compute uh, using half electrons instead of whole electrons. Traditional approaches would have needed a facility the size of a small city for that many qubits. So Microsoft claims that they, this solves the three key challenges, size, stability, and control. The scale jump is going to like going from a calculator to a supercomputer. So this is going to be really big and they're going to continue to push a lot of this, right? And I'm not going to go into all the theoreticals of it and all the deep of it. You can go definitely go find this video and watch it from Microsoft. Um, but you know, Microsoft's topological cubic also had advantage of others because of its size, right? And so that's where they're really pushing this. Now, the interesting thing about this is that while Microsoft unveils this, um, you know, they claim that the building its first quantum computer crypt requires that create a new state of matter, um, but they won't be available through Azure Cloud, but it opens doors to future models with greater capacity like this. So my son and I were talking about this yesterday because he was asking me about it. It's like, so dad, what's this new supercomputer that I'm hearing about? Like, what's it going to do? And it's really funny because my kid loves dirt bikes. He's not really much into tech. And he was asking me about it and he wasn't really sure what to do, what, what this meant. And the best way that I could explain it to him, I actually found is a really good example that I wanted to share with y'all. So imagine if somebody came and said, hey, here is all the power of the sun, right? 
our grids couldn't even begin to hold it. There would be no battery that could possibly even begin to store the level of battery. We don't have power lines that could even begin to harness the level of power if we just literally dropped the power of the sun into the grid. And that's what we have here with Microsoft's quantum computing. They've, they have this and it's theoretically built into a chip, but they haven't even really proofed what it can do yet. So right now everything is still theoretical because literally they don't even know how to harness this much power, right? And so as they look back at this, um, you know, it could be a huge significant boost to AI, but we're not really sure yet because until Microsoft can learn how to harness it, and even Satya Nadal is even uh, employing inside of his own company and externally to figure out how to harness this. There's no operating system. There's no motherboard to plug into that can handle this level of power. So while it's interesting and theoretical interesting there's still gonna be a lot of a lot more connecting dots to connect before we can actually make it um uh, fully useful and so even microsoft admits that the practical applications are still years away and so by years it could even potentially still be decades away but it is the first generation of a chip with limited capabilities so software and algorithms for quantum computers still are super primitive and so again back to that analogy of the sun if we were to try to drop the power of the sun and say hey let's have it come out of this uh, generating station literally it would melt the power lines then if you could even figure out the power lines what to do with it what would it do like the the transformers wouldn't know what to do with it the uh, there would be no battery that could possibly store it so that's really kind of where we're at right now with quantum computing this is like the first transi transistor, not the first iPhone, right? So Elon Musk called it promising if true, right? And I, I note that there's an if, and there are definitely some people who are questioning, uh, you know, like the reality of it because, and this is going to be really hard for them to prove. Um, but we've obviously seen Satya Nadala take a little bit of a step back from AI. So even he's seeing that AI isn't quite everything that they've promised it to be. Um, I was just reading another article that was talking about Microsoft Copilot, you know, driving the airplane straight into the cliff, right? So there's a lot of amazing things we have with the power that we have at our fingertips right now. So we're in an interesting, interesting time. Quantum computing looks like this great leap forward, but how do we harness it, right? AI and the LLMs that we have are really powerful, yet they're still not accurate enough, right? Um, I was reading this article that just talked about what would we do, uh, you know, uh, the nightmare that Copilot has become for all network administrators that now anybody can spin up an AI agent, kick it off, and suddenly they have this barrage of the super attack coming from inside of their own network, right? So this is an example of where we're seeing a huge shift where we have power, but with that comes a lot of responsibility, and we're not really sure what to do with that. So the journey from announcement to practical impact with the quantum computing is gonna take some time. So we first have to see some scientific applications in chemistry and materials, right? Then financial and optimization problems will likely follow, right? Consumer applications will be probably decades away. So this announcement is more revolutionary than evolutionary, right? We're witnessing what could be an interesting pivotal moment if that were the truth and suddenly we had literally unlimited computing power and they could figure out how to harness even just a fraction of it, this would be huge. But I'm curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? I love to have a great conversation and the best compliment I get is when you guys leave a comment down below. I actually answer them personally. I don't have anybody else answer them. And so, uh, and also when you guys make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers in our licensed coding boot camps, as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. So reach out to us at startuphack.com slash Spencer, because we'd love to help. And here's some great information. Want to become a software developer, but don't want to spend four years in college and rack up massive student loan debts? Think you need technical expertise to get started? Welcome to Startup Hack, a better way to start your software career without student loans and years without income. One-on-one -on -one tutoring is included so you never get stuck and have guidance through the whole process. No technical experience is necessary. Learn at your own pace and in your own space. Startup Pack has worked with local state agencies in your area to make it so that qualifying students can get the program costs covered entirely and students can start earning while they learn. Startup Hack's .NET Coding Bootcamp was a game changer for my career. As someone with no prior programming experience, I was initially intimidated by the idea of learning to code, but the instructors at Startup Hack broke down complex concepts into easy to understand lessons and provided hands-on projects that really cemented my understanding. The curriculum was comprehensive and up-to-date and got me ready for my first job. What really set Startup Pack apart was the focus on practical, real-world skills. Thanks to Startup Hack, I landed my 
dream job as a .NET developer within weeks of graduating. I went from knowing nothing about code to building professional grade web applications in just a few intense months. If you're looking to break into .NET development or level up your coding skills, I cannot recommend Startup Hack enough. Complete our three month coding bootcamp, gain hands on experience, and land a paid internship. With two years of experience, on average, our graduates are making over $80,000 per year. The three month program includes technologies from Microsoft, Google, and Facebook. No debt, just a quick path to earning. Check out startuphack.com to code your future and start today.